All right, hello everybody. Uh, the following is a Pokemon fan fiction titled "Really Old Pokemon Fanfic" by Razumakazi, which I found on his blog. The sun was shining as Ash reached the town of Vermilion. It had been years since he had returned to the city, haunted by the memories of the almost fatal cruise on the SS Anne. But all the training and traveling had taken its toll, and he needed a much-needed vacation. It had also been a while since Ash had seen Misty. He had remained in touch, but ever since she returned to her hometown of Gorillion to maintain its gym, he hadn't found time to drop by and say hello. So when Ash won a week's stay in the one of Vermillion's fabulous resorts in a Pokemon tournament, he decided to invite Misty and Brock for a reunion. Memories of his victory over Lieutenant Surge filled his mind as he passed the Vermillion Gym, the day that solidified him as a legitimate trainer. He was almost tempted to give Surge a rematch, but he had sworn off battling for the week. Pikachu cried out gleefully when it saw the resort in the distance. It was like something from a dream. It had the perfect view over the ocean. Ash! What's taking you so long? We've been waiting for three hours for you to arrive, a familiar voice cried out. I don't know, I wasn't sure if I was really ready to see you again, Misty, Ash snided sarcastically. I am delicate, you know. What? What did you say? Misty yelled back at him. If it wasn't for the fact that you won this, I would slug you right now. Calm down, calm down, Brock said. It's been, what, two years and you guys can't put aside your bickering? She started it, Ash said quietly. He had to admit, Misty had changed in the two years since he had saw her last. She had her let her hair grow, and it was now reached down to her shoulders. She had done away with the tomboyish look in favor of one more suiting of a girl. But she'd always been that girl, whose bike he accidentally destroyed four years ago. They checked into the hotel, and Misty decided to go tanning, while Brock and Ash played a game of pokey golf on the resort's course. They talked about Ash's latest adventures and Brock's success as a Pokemon breeder. After they were done, Brock decided to go check if the Lady Aerobics instructor needed any help with her class, so Ash went to go see how Misty was doing. He found her on the beach, basking in the glow of the sun, wearing a white tube-top bikini. He noticed that Misty had changed in more ways than just her hair. <laughs> her body had become more curvaceous. Her belly had gone tight. For a while, Ash stood staring in silence, unable to think the words to say to her. Are you okay, Ash? Misty questioned. Um, uh, I gotta go, Ash said quickly. For some reason, he... He, he'd grown extremely embarrassed and felt a bulge coming from his pants. He was compelled to cover it with his hands and quickly ran away before Misty could see. <laughs> hmm. I've never seen Ash act like that before. I wonder if he's okay, Misty wondered to herself, out loud. As Misty returned to her sunbathing, Ash went to find Brock to see if he knew what to do. He found him in a gym where the aerobics class was being taught and went up to him as he was giving one of the girls a leg massage. Even though it looked like Brock was enjoying it, giving it more than the girl, he quickly grabbed Brock's arm and rug him out of the gym into a private room. What in the Pokemon Ranger for the DS do you think you're doing, Ash? Brock demanded. Can't you see I was doing something very important? I need your help, Brock. I saw Misty in her new bikini, and for some reason I felt a bulge in my pants. And couldn't say anything, Ash said shyly. I think there's something wrong with me. Brock smirked, a smirk he never thought he'd smirk before in his life. Oh, Ash, I was wondering when you start feeling this way. It's perfectly normal for boys of your age to start having these kinds of reactions. It's called puberty. Puberty? What kind of Pokemon is that? Wait, are you saying there's a Pokemon in my pants? How did it get there? Ash yelled. <laughs> no, no, puberty is a natural cycle a boy goes through to become a man, Brock explained. I thought you became a man by catching lots of Pokemon, Ash questioned. No, if that were the case, you'd be 40 before you'd even qualify for that, Brock joked, as Ash gasped. Let me explain. Boys and girls are different in many ways, but more specifically, in their pants. Oh, you mean not everyone has a tiny caterpie in there, Ash inquired. No, Ash, girls have, well, more of a shelter, Brock informed him. What about those things on their chests? 
What are those, Brock? Ash questioned. Well, those I like to call girls jiggly puffs, and if they're really big, I call them wiggly puffs, Brock explained. If you didn't notice, men like me get very excited by these, and then our caterpies evolve into a metapod. When you please your metapod, it uses a powerful string shot that leaves you with a very happy feeling. But guys aren't the only ones who need their Pokemon pleased. Girls like it when you use your metapod to please their shelters. Are you saying I should show Misty my Caterpie? Nash asked. Whoa, no, girls are creeped out when you do that. First, you have to get her to want to see your Caterpie, so she can help it evolve, Brock told him. So, are you saying I should ask Misty out on a date? Ash asked him. If you want her to make your Caterpie evolve, that's the only way, Ash, Brock, Brock informed him. <laughs> then I'll do it, Ash exclaimed cheerfully as he walked towards the door. Ash ran to the beach, but when he couldn't find Misty, he decided to go back to his suite on the resort. When he entered, he saw Misty enjoying an ice cream cone with Pikachu. Figuring now would be the <laughs> great time to ask her out, he sat down next to her. Hey, Ash, Misty smiled while Pikachu let out a Pika Pika. What was with you earlier? Oh, that, Ash shrugged. It was nothing. I, uh, I just had to go to the bathroom really bad. Real smooth, Ash, he thought to himself. Oh, I thought you were sick or something, Misty sighed in relief as she went back to her ice cream. With every lick, Ash grew more and more desperate to be that cone. As he stared, he could feel his caterpie staring, starting to learn harden. <laughs> Soon, Misty noticed him staring. What are you looking at, Ash? Misty asked with a confused look on her face. If you want, I could get you some, too. No, no, it's not that, Ash said. Misty, I, I've been thinking. Hold on, Ash, Misty interrupted as she pulled out her cell phone. It was one of her sisters calling to check up on her. As she walked around talking about girly things with her sister, Ash couldn't help but smile at how cute Misty had become. Just a few years ago, he barely even realized she was a girl, but now he couldn't think of her any other way. He loved the way she danced around on her smooth, nimble legs, as her eyes brightened at the latest rumors of shopping sales. His caterpie started throbbing as he noticed the way her jiggly puffs jiggled as she bounced with glee. Suddenly, he stood up and walked up to Misty, grabbed her waist, and spun around as he laid a deep kiss on Misty. At first, Misty resisted Ash's move, but soon brought herself in to return the kiss. She threw her phone down as she wrapped her arms around Ash, as he moved her to towards the bedroom, Pika tried to follow them in, but was greeted by the door shutting in his face. As they continued thrusting their tongues down each other's throats like hungry lick tongues Ash moved his hands from Missy's waist up to her jiggly puffs. He softly caressed them, and was surprised to find that they felt much like the various dittos he had come across in his Pokemon journey. He only stopped for enough time for Missy to pull off her shirt and bra off, exposing her pale jiggly puffs to Ash's eyes. Ash proceeded to take off his shirt, and then moved his hands down to Missy's pants to feel her shoulder. Oh my god, should I continue reading this? Uh... <laughs> he was greatly confused when he found it because he had never come across a shoulder that was so warm and fuzzy. As he touched it, Misty let out a sigh of pleasure and allowed Ash to move her shorts and underwear. She then unbuttoned Ash's pants and did something he would have never expected. At first, it seemed like she was trying to eat his Metapod, which, which panicked Ash, but then he felt a great deal of pleasure coming from his Metapod. He never knew his Caterpie could ever feel like this. Ugh. <sighs> Just as soon as he was sure his Metapod would burst, Misty seemed to instinctively remove his Metapod from her mouth and motioned for Ash to let it crawl into her shelter. Oh, God. They both moaned loudly as Ash made his Metapod crawl in and out of Misty's shelter. Uh, Ash had never felt so alive before. As he felt his Metapod readying its string shot, he pulled it out and allowed it to slow Misty's speed. Oh, Ash, that was amazing, Misty moaned in ecstasy. I'm glad I could please your shelter like that, although my Metapod feels 
really worn out, Ash said. Don't worry about it. I'm sure it will be ready for another battle soon, Misty said, as she allowed Ash to cuddle her in his arms. Ash rested his head on her soft jiggly puffs when he noticed that Misty had a tattoo right next to her shoulder that looked like writing. Curiously, he moved his head to see what it said and was horrified to read the words, G Gary was here, <laughs> Ash is a loser. <laughs> Alright, well that was... It was more graphic than I thought it was going to be.